So in breaking news, our Baltimore Ravens have signed a veteran at the wide receiver position. But who is he? What could his role possibly be? And why did the Baltimore Ravens sign? And we're going to talk about all that and more. Before we do, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Turn your notifications on so you don't miss updates like this or anything else going on with our Baltimore Ravens. And leave a like on the video. Click that thumbs up button, baby. It helps out the channel a ton. I appreciate y'all. I love y'all so much. And let's get into it. So the Baltimore Ravens, they have signed veteran six-year wide receiver Russell Gage. Former Tampa Bay Buccaneer. Former Atlanta Falcon, but now a current Baltimore Ravens. So welcome to the AFC North. It's a little different over here than it is over there in the, a the NFC South. But I'm sure he'll fit in nicely. But why would the Baltimore Ravens sign him? Well, my initial thoughts were, man, is Rashad Bateman's rib injury a little more concerning? Or do the Baltimore Ravens just want to get ahead of the curve when it comes to possible injuries to their wide receivers and just really the depth? That would be the biggest thing right there, in my opinion, the depth. Something that we've continued to talk about all offseason long. The Baltimore Ravens have been running some very risky business when it comes to the wide receiver position because they got Zay Flowers. We know what Zay Flowers did last year. He was amazing last year, did his thing, loved it. But after that, it's a lot of question marks. Rashad Bateman, potential's there, but still a lot of uncertainty and a lot of question marks. Tez Walker, potential's there, but he's a rookie. So there's a lot of question marks there as well. Deontay Hardy expected to be the return man. So at wide receiver, still a question mark. Tylen Wallace, who got all the talent in the world, but we haven't really seen him on the field because he just hasn't got much playing time. So there's uncertainty there as well. With Nelson Aguilar, I feel like Nelson Aguilar, he's more of a role player. So I feel like we know what we're going to get from a Nelson Aguilar. So it's not really uncertainty. But still, with the majority of our wide receivers being very uncertain guys and guys that we are just unsure of right now, then that, that's very risky business. So bringing in a veteran like Russell Gage, it, it just helps improve the depth at the wide receiver position. But what could his role be with the Baltimore Ravens? Well, I think it would be just that, that of a role player. Because when you look at his career with the Atlanta Falcons, and with shortly with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, that's exactly what he was. He was a role player, but he was a productive role player because let's look at his numbers minus 2018, which was his rookie year. 2019, he had 49 catches for 446 yards uh, and had a touchdown. 2020, he had 72 catches for 786 yards and four touchdowns. 2021, 66 catches, 770 yards and four touchdowns. And then 2022, he had 51 catches for 426 yards and five touchdowns. And he missed all of last season with a torn patella tendon, so he was out. But there are no setbacks. His injury is good to go. He was out there actually today. With the Baltimore Ravens, they signed him today. He was practicing today, so he is not hurt at all. So we ain't got to worry about that. He has missed some games from time to time throughout his career, but nothing crazy. I think last year was the worst injury that he ever got, but we're glad that he's good now. Now, when you look at these numbers, they're not necessarily eye-popping numbers, but context is important. 2019, he was with the Falcons, but who was around him? Why, why did he only put up a, a modest... Uh, 49 catches, 446 yards. Even though for a role player, I would say that that's pretty good. Well... He was catching passes also with Julio Jones, Austin Hooper, and Calvin Ridley, even Muhammad Sanu. So he had a, a, a good amount of receivers around him. Then the following year, in 2020, was Calvin Ridley, uh, Hayden Hurst, Julio Jones for a little bit too. So again, he was a role player. That, that, that was his role to just be a role player. He was not asked to be the guy. He was not asked to be the focal point of the Atlanta Falcons offense. So then the following year, in 2021, it was Kyle Pitts. You know, they loved them some Kyle Pitts. They, just, they threw them, him the ball a lot. They just ain't throw no touchdowns to him. But anyway, it was Kyle Pitts, uh, Russell Gage, and Cordero Patterson. Then the following year in 2022 when he was with the Bucks, uh, he was around Mike Evans, who you know be popping off for a million yards every season and a million touchdowns. And then there's Chris Godwin as well. So, again, he, he, he hasn't been asked to be the focal point, and he would not be asked to be that with the Baltimore Ravens. But just come in. When we call your number, be ready to make a play. It, again, very similar to Nelson Aguilar. So just a, another role player type of receiver that the Baltimore Ravens added. Um, he's also somebody that, hey, if Ravens want to run a little trick play, that boy Russell Gage, he, he could throw that ball too because he got a little bit of experience with that. So Ravens, if they want to get super creative with it, 
they got the option to. But welcome, Russell Gage, to the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, and we'll see. We'll see what this means for Rashad Bateman. We'll see what this means for the Baltimore Ravens overall. Uh, and then we'll just go from there. I ain't like looking, oh, man, this move sucks. Oh, man. I'm not, cause I, and I know with everything right now, especially circulating with Brandon Ayuk, I know a lot of Ravens fans been watching, watching out for that and whatnot, uh, especially because – there have been rumors that the Steelers were in on Brandon Ayuk. Now, apparently, that's cooled down. We'll see. There's been rumors that the Cleveland Browns are in on Brandon Ayuk. We'll see what happens with that. And then, of course, they've been talking about the Patriots uh, and also the, the Commanders as well. So we're just waiting, waiting to see what happens with that. But the Baltimore Ravens are like, man, we ain't waiting on no Brandon Ayuk. We're getting ourselves a Russell Gage. Now that we got that word on Russell Gage, let's hear a word from our sponsor. Preseason is here, so that means regular season is literally right around the corner. And I know we're all excited to see our Baltimore Ravens play, but a lot of y'all are even more excited to see them play in person. But where can you find the best deals on tickets? Well, look no further. Today's video is sponsored by SeatGeek. With over 28 million downloads, SeatGeek is the number one rated ticketing app. There are more than 70,000 events on SeatGeek from concerts to festivals to football games, basketball games. It's all type of stuff. And so many of y'all have asked me, hey, where can I find a good deal on some good seats to go see these good or great Baltimore Ravens play live in action? Well, check out SeatGeek. See, SeatGeek makes it easy for you because they put all the tickets all across the web in one place because they want to make sure that you're getting a good deal. Each ticket that you see is rated on a scale from 1 to 10. So make sure when you're scrolling through the app, you look for those green dots because green dots means good red dots means well you know so once you're on c geek you're scrolling through the app you find the tickets that you're looking for you know i had to come through for you guys you can use my code engraving for 20 dollars off of tickets at c geek again use my code engraving for 20 dollars off of your tickets from c geek that's 20 dollars off your first purchase with promo code engraving make sure you click the link down below in the description to download the app russell gage wasn't the only player that the baltimore ravens added to the roster because their rookie adisa isaac who he know have been dealing with some hamstring injuries for the longest he has officially been added to the roster today he is off the non-football injury list and he was practicing today so congrats to him Deontay Hardy who we were just talking about a couple of minutes ago he was back at practice as well now with that being said, there were also some people who were not at practice today, uh, and those guys included Tyler Lindebaum, who Harbaugh said they're going to be holding out. We'll see what happens with that. But also Rashad Bateman. Rashad Bateman was not practicing today. So, yeah, again, hopefully it's not anything that lingers. Hopefully his injury that he got yesterday ain't nothing crazy. Again, that could be part of the reason why the Baltimore Ravens brought on a Russell Gage because their depth at wide receiver is well, – it was already thin with the Rashad Bateman, in my opinion. But now with Rashad Bateman out, you had to bring somebody in and help take these reps. Um, also – uh, Roche, who they just recently signed, he wasn't practicing today. Adafi Away and Arthur Millette, they weren't practicing either. Trayvon Mullen, who Harbaugh said would be out for a couple of weeks, he was absent. And then also the D lineman, uh, Sanat. So Ravens had a good amount of absences. Nothing too crazy concerning. The one that we really got our eyes on is Rashad Bateman. So we just got to wait and watch over him for the next couple of days. So Lamar Jackson, I heard you don't like working out. Who, who said that? Sources. Who your sources? Sources. Shout out to Lamar Jackson because I know he remembers that interview. Because this dude like has a crazy memory. He remembers everything and everybody. But shout out to him for not holding any grudges. Uh, because he was interviewed by CBS Sports' Jonathan Jones um, and he had some very interesting things to say one he talked about his weight he talked about slimming down felt like he said he felt like he, he was fat before that he gained so much weight and that he just couldn't move like he used to he said he was looking at old film and whatnot and he was like man like I just I, I couldn't take off like I, I should have been able to but now I, I don't drop the weight so I'm back um, but then he also talked about the Super Bowl and his Super Bowl aspirations um, and he didn't even talk about how he wanted to win it for himself, but he talked about how he wanted to do it in honor of Jacoby Jones. And that'll be special, especially he talked about because it's, it's in Jacoby Jones' hometown of New Orleans. And that, that would be something. That would really be something if Ravens, like one, if they, if they get the job done. Obviously, that would be special in itself. Uh, but then just with the pattern, because the Baltimore Ravens, they got this crazy pattern. I was hoping they were going to break it last year, but they got this pattern of every 12 years, 
Because obviously the 2000 season, they won a Super Bowl in 2001. Then the 2012 season, they won a Super Bowl in 2013. I was hoping last year, even though it was an 11th year, it wasn't a 12th year, but I was hoping last year they were going to break it and, and win. But they were like, nah, we'll, we'll push it off a year. So, hey, 2024 season, you want to win a Super Bowl in 2025, Ravens? We won't have no problem with that at all. Hold up. Before we get out of here, don't the Ravens and Eagles got a preseason game coming up in a couple of days? I think that they do. And would any of y'all like to actually go to that game? I think that you might. Well, shout out to my guy, Woodsy Digital, for making this happen. We are giving away two tickets to the Ravens and Eagles preseason game. And if you would like to enter into that giveaway, the rules are super, super simple. All you got to do, be subscribed to the channel, have the notifications turned on, leave a like on the video, share this video out, and then comment your favorite moment from Lamar Jackson since he's been a Baltimore Raven. Make sure you are paying attention to the replies to your comments because when I reply to you and tell you you won, you need to respond ASAP. We are going to be picking a winner by Midnight Eastern Time tonight By Not at But by that time Because we will know You got to make your plans So you can go to the game And stuff Make your arrangements And all that So please be paying attention To your replies So when I tell you You won I can send you over the tickets Love y'all team Keep it clean